Isso, ele vai, ele vai entrar aqui agora. Aqui, ó. John Maddock, para quem não conhece, né, um do figura mais conhecida do, do, do Linux, né? acho que mais do que o Linux até. Né? Não sei se ele já começou ali ou não. Pode começar, né? Consegue avisar ele ali? Opa, vou tentar. Eu não sei se consegue, consegue deixar a tela cheia aqui. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is John Mad Dog Call, and I am the Chief uh, Executive Officer of Optin Corporation. And we make peer-to-peer uh, -peer cloud software, but we're also very in the cryptocurrency and also digital currency of all types. Um, part of our peer-to-peer -peer, uh, allows you to charge for uh, resources that you have and also to buy resources that you have. And we depend upon digital currency and cryptocurrency to facilitate that. I'd also like to introduce Mr. Alex Karasulu, who is my chief technical officer and the founder of Where, and he is on the car also. Alex? Sure. Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. We're suffering a little bit from bandwidth considerations, and that's why Alex is not showing his very handsome face uh, while we're doing this. That will be a big problem. You can see my perfectly ugly face in place of that. So what would be the, you know, what, what, should, we, what should we start with? I was under the understanding that this is a panel for people we're going to be discussing Bitcoins and cryptocurrency, but if you would have something you would like us to discuss, please tell us. You're, you're still muffled. Can't hear you if you're saying something. Okay, I turned my camera off. One, two, three, can everyone hear me? I can hear you. I can hear you. Can people hear me, John Mad Dog Hall? I cannot really hear you very well. I could hear that fairly clearly. So maybe you could ask us questions through chat and we could answer them. Yes, we can. I can hear you. I can hear you. Uh, about the rise of the Bitcoin, and what are your views on it, and in which way uh, could it be, or could it make uh, programmers' life easier? It's like um, ways for programmers to get paid, uh, ways for programmers and uh, other people to get paid by making software, providing services. Oh, what are your views on that? How do you see the, the outlook, for example, 10 years from now? Okay, so let me tell you exactly what Supertie's plans and Optin's opt plans. Optin is a corporation and Supertie is the software and, and this is software suite. And it also requires hardware. Um, we, we have a peer-to-peer -peer cloud software. So if, you know, right today, if you try and use the cloud, you're talking to Amazon or you're talking to Google. And they have this cloud that you can't really sell anything to. You buy things from them. Things from them with money or you buy things from them by their going through your data and, uh, you know, and, and finding out things and selling marketing information to people. So 
it, you know, so, but you can't sell anything. This is not like the electric grid where if you generate electricity, you can sell that electricity into the grid, or if you need electricity, you can buy it from the grid. With our software, you as a computer owner can set up a network of your own and you can sell some of your resources, whether it be disk resources or CPU resources or other types of resources that you have to other people who are in your network. And you make a peer-to-peer -peer connection with them. So you authenticate with them, they know who you are and you know who they are. You're selling this, uh, this resource you can use what we call goodwill. It's a, type, it's a type of digital currency. It's very lightweight. But you, if you sell so many units of your disk, then you get so many units of goodwill. goodwill you, literally. There's other ways of earning goodwill. Simply by installing Supatai, you can get a certain amount of goodwill. If you do things, uh, projects for you know, people, you, they can give you some of their goodwill. And this has to be very lightweight and the transaction has to be very low cost and it has to be the same all over the world because you may be having resources in the United States that you want to sell to people in Germany. And you don't want to have to go through some type of conversion of marks into dollars or euros into dollars or things like that. Of course, if you do want to, you know, buy some goodwill, maybe you don't have enough for your own needs, you could use a cryptocurrency to buy the goodwill. Uh, we don't necessarily encourage people to go the other way of taking goodwill and turning it into a cryptocurrency, although they probably could do that. So this is one way that we're using a digital currency in order to lower the cost of the transaction and to make it easier for people to, to use. Now we do have plans on coming out with a more conventional cryptocurrency. And we're gonna use that the same way that most people use cryptocurrency, but we're going to make sure that ours is going to be a utility. It's going to be a utility currency. So on day one, you're gonna be able to buy things with this. And, and we think that this is a good thing in the marketplace especially when what you're buying is something that is digital. So you, you say, oh, I like that program. Here, here's some of my cryptocurrency, boom, boom. In less than a tenth of a second or even a hundredth of a second or a millisecond, that transaction has been done. And you can use smart contracts and things like that to further define what you're buying. And the, 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 these purchases can almost be automatic. In fact, in some cases, they may be automatic. And so that's why we think that cryptocurrency is a good thing. I have to admit that, you know, maybe several years ago, when I hadn't looked into it very much, that I thought that cryptocurrency was, I didn't know what to think of it. In the years, I began to think about it more. And I said to myself, well, what is a dollar bill? Paper with some ink on it. And the only thing that gives that any type of value is the people's faith in it and how much it will buy. And without that, it's just a piece of paper with some ink on it. Just like a diploma is a piece of paper with ink on it. If people do not think of your university as being a worthwhile education, and that you may know something out of coming out of university. So that's what that's some of the ways that we're using our digital currency and cryptocurrency. One more thing about goodwill that really drew me to opt in was the fact that you can take your goodwill that you've earned and you can actually donate that to an open source project maybe a project that needs additional storage space or it needs additional CPU power, you can donate that to the project and then they can buy these resources simply using this goodwill. Well, 
in order for this to work, of course, we want to be able to make sure that Suvatai is available to everybody. And so we've made it open source. And you can simply pull down the software and start using it. You can start earning goodwill immediately. And you can start setting up networks with, within your school, within your company, with, you know, or within your neighborhood to buy and sell resources. Alex told me one time, and I believe this is true, that 90% of all the CPU resources in the world are wasted because they're just sitting there idle and nobody's using them. You might as well be able to sell those to people who actually need them. So I'm going to stop here for a second and ask if there's any questions. Uh, this about this goodwill um, is it a database currency or is is it an actual cryptocurrency? Uh, it's it's more of a of a pseudo currency at this point. It's not a real cryptocurrency. Okay, maybe Alex can give a little bit more insight into that. Oh yeah, I think you should. Uh, you have a, uh, an arbitrage facility that. Uh, makes it easier to trade resources across the internet. I'm sorry, it's, it's, it's hard for me to hear you. I don't know what's, what's, what's the problem, but you're very hard to understand. Hello, uh, is it better? Is it better now? That was Mad Dog, yes. It's oh, better, okay. yes. Okay, uh, so you designed a platform, which is a facility that enables us to arbitrage between um, many parts of the world to allow for interchange of digital resources that can be traded across people around the world, but you rely on the database currency. Yes. Okay. I think I, under I, think I understood you, yes. And uh, what, what are your plans on improving that? What are our plans on, on what? I'm sorry. On improving that feature, on improving that platform so that uh, I think that uh, cryptocurrencies are the most reliable way to deal with this uh, kind of transactions. Uh, and it is very important to ensure uh, security of transactions and among other issues, so um, I think that you believe in goodwill as, a, as the core currency of your project. But um, don't you think it is more adequate to rely on the cryptocurrency instead? Well, we, we intend on using cryptocurrency, but that is more of a thing where you buy. We're going to have a, a store you know, uh, uh, a marketplace that people can buy additional CPU power and things like that. They can buy uh, books, they can buy courses, they can buy lots of things. And we're reaching out to some vendors even now to line up those people so that they say that on day one, they will be willing to accept our cryptocurrency for this. But we're not quite sure at this point that the resource at the resource level, because remember these resources are gonna be flying back and forth. They're gonna be happening so fast, not be worthwhile to go with a heavier weight coin than what we wanna do with what we call goodwill. So you'd be able to buy this and, and, and trade it and give it away and stuff like that. But we're not quite sure at this point that uh, we want to go with anything heavier than goodwill. If we find a problem with that, maybe we will. Maybe we will, you know, as we, as we go on, we find that, you know, gee, we can actually handle the, the mechanism of cryptocurrency uh, very well, and we might trade over. But at this point, we don't want to keep the goodwill very, very, very lightweight. You mentioned the possibility of these transactions being automatic or automatically triggered. And for this to, to be possible, uh, 
I think smart contracts must be involved, must be used for that. And uh, yes, indeed. Um, so, can I elaborate a little bit? Um, what John was talking about is sure. But degree because we were waiting for the proof of stake uh, uh, versus proof of work, the transaction um, of actually trading resources. Uh, excuse me, I'm under, uh, I'm very close to the airport if there's sounds coming. Um, so uh, essentially uh, we're at a point where we're verifying the capabilities of the system. We're using blockchain to make sure that we can manage this fiat currency through the blockchain. Uh, we stopped, we paused, uh, we were looking at uh, cheaper algorithms. I don't want to waste computing resources in order to uh, use computing resources. So, uh, making point right now. So we've kept the internals. Uh, also, we have other problems. For example, we like to reward people and it's not very easy to do with a cryptocurrency. You can't just generate goodwill uh, to reward people with, in order to produce it or have a reserve that, that's finite. So, you know, this goes back to our philosophy. We see, we don't see cryptocurrency taking over uh, fiat currencies. We see a balance. Don't you sort think? Sort of uh, equilibrium being reached between the two for different uses and cases. How do you guarantee the scarcity of the resources of this uh, this goodwill currency that you use? How do you guarantee that it is scarce? Because if you if you can just generate new coins to reward anybody at your will, maybe it's not of use because uh, maybe well, it, the value is the we currency. We don't think goodwill is scarce or limited. We think we can generate it unlimited amounts of goodwill. You can't? Capacity. Yes. I think we have unlimited, uh, we have an unlimited capacity to generate goodwill um, through mentoring and helping and contributing to projects. I, I don't think it's something that as a scarce resource. That's why we want to keep it fiat, yet use the blockchain to make sure that by the ledger, but we, we don't necessarily need to generate a token for it. Well, so you don't have any token. You just have a number on a database stating that there are this amount <laughs> of, of database, goodwill. But we, we, we we have we have that just as a, a, a it's something we store on the ledger. It's like information stored on the ledger, and that way, you know, if there's a compromise anywhere, it's on the ledger. It, there's there's no uh, you know people don't lose goodwill once they've earned it. We're not necessarily making that a token transaction. And besides that, you have an unlimited unlimited um, supply of that goodwill currency. Because if you think of goodwill between people, it's not something that's scarce. It's something that we can generate. I agree with that, but, but money is scarce. Yeah, so this is the... And services and other resources are scarce. So I think that something is missing in this equation because you were, you were dealing with a lot of scarce resources. You're talking about digital resources cryptocurrencies which are real money and you're trading it all for a resource a resource that is unlimited it's not scarce something doesn't doesn't close in this equation because uh, on one side well, you have scarce resources system. and on the other a, side you have an unlimited to resource design a high bag with the communications but there's a hybrid system here. We're not we're not trying to go with an exclusive uh, 
cryptocurrency to drive where that's one of the unique things about what we're doing is uh you know what we have to do is we have to balance across things so people will be able to transact with the cryptocurrency to purchase resources um but there are other things that are based on people's behavior that you want to reward token goodwill you know that's not something that is a limited resource for us. So it's a very difficult modeling problem for us to model the economics of that. Does that make sense? It's a, it's a hybrid system, actually. Do you have an objective model for uh, this goodwill currency generation? Because it, it seems to me that it's it's subjective and it doesn't it's not compatible <laughs> with with the objective resources that you have at hand well we're 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 in the process of trying to understand the impacts of certain uh rules and how we can leverage smart contracts without having the limitations on the goodwill part um, and how there would be uh, a, a, an exchange and how, how, how that could be exchanged for the cryptocurrency. We're in a very experimental point uh, with what we're doing right now. So it is subjective. You're, you're right. We don't have an objective model yet. We're testing it and we're looking at what the community thinks. We need people using it before we can, uh, you know, solidify an objective model around it. Don't you think you Does need an sense? objective model? You think you need an objective model, right? I think so. Absolutely, you need an objective model because then it could be manipulated. If yes. you were subjective about it, yes. right? It, it seems you have no rules about these goodwill currencies, just as you like. You, you, issue, it, you issue it as you like. And, and yeah, it might be difficult, but there are no objective rules about it. Right now, there aren't. We're, you know, we're in the process of, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to understand how things will work. We actually have all the infrastructure pieces built around this, and uh, we're trying to see how to model it. Um, uh, but we we cannot have goodwill being a cryptocurrency. We can. need some kind of currency. Uh, based on an objective model that rewards people in a limitless fashion because goodwill, human goodwill is not, you know, a finite, uh, limited thing. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's a very difficult endeavor, but I think the best way to see it working is to actually get people on the system and work with the community to determine what that objective model will be in the end. I yes. am to do right now. And we will use the ledger to back the goodwill to protect it, of course. But it's and, basically uh, a database, not a not a, an actual blockchain. It's just a database. No, no, an actual blockchain. Oh, that's great. We're, we're not, we, we're, yeah, we're not, we're not interested in keeping that in a centralized database. Otherwise, that limits us severely. So want uh, 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 we don't want goodwill to be a token we don't even want goodwill to be a currency but we want to be able to track it we want people to earn it we want people to trade it it gets very fuzzy at this edge uh, just our terminology in, in terms of calling it a currency is is a bit dangerous and uh so we're trying to model something that 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 is a human thing. Um, we're trying to make it objective, um, and we're definitely backing it by the blockchain. It's it's just not a token in itself. Yeah, definitely got your point. Yeah. Let I, me I, let me let me give you a concrete example of how this might work. And you mentioned smart contracts before, and I mentioned that something might happen automatically. And I want to explain why that happens. Subutai 
is using systems all over the world to create a cloud network that you could participate in. And a lot of this, the, 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 the actual resources that you use, like a disk, might actually migrate over time, migrate the data over time, because if you, the user, moves from North America to China, the communication costs of moving that data over that distance and things like latency and other things might be so high that you say, no, 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 I want to move that data. And so you may be moving from one system that has a certain amount of goodwill required to buy some resources to another system that has maybe the more stable disks or maybe they're um, it, it, it's easier for you to use those disks, and therefore you may have to pay more goodwill for those resources than you were paying before. How much you pay for those resources and what the criteria are for them are built into that smart contract. You can write rules that control how much you pay, you know, how much, you know, when should you migrate and all those type of things, so that the system then does it automatically. When it realizes that this is, it's, it's reached a trigger, trigger level, it will move the data. Or perhaps you've been using a lot of CPUs in a Beowulf style system to do some computation, but somebody comes up with some cheaper CPUs that you want to use. And so the system can switch from using one group of CPUs to another automatically. And that's where you need the service level agreement. And that's where you need the, that's where it's automatic. You may not know it's happening when it does. Is that clear? Yes, I like this idea very much and it's so interesting. I just can't see how a so subjective currency as that one you designed fits into it because it's so objective that you're measuring resources on each end and these the related costs the distance and other costs are so precise they're so accurate and you're trading everything uh, over or relying on uh, something that has no definite value and has no uh, emission limit at all. But we think we think that over time, it, that you know, the people using it will create that value, just like a dollar bill has its value created over time by people using it and buying and trading things. And we think that this is going to be set by the community, like Alex was explaining. But we don't have enough people in our community yet to to really formulate how this is done. So that's why at this at this point in our career, we're simply trying to get people to start using Subatai, and maybe in their own environment, where they don't have to worry too much about trading, buying and selling. They're just trying to level out their resource usage. Uh, hello. Connection seems to be gone. I'm here. Oh, yes. great. Yeah, so, um, can, you, can you hear? Oh, yes, I can hear you both. And yes, uh, I, I got, I, get, I definitely got your point. Yes, uh, it's about making the market define things. Okay. Yes. The only and, flaw. And, and the, the only it's, flaw. It's I, a bit dangerous. It's a bit dangerous and irresponsible yes. for us. I mean, we're people with. Uh, you know, um, you know, reputation here, and you know, we have to make sure that uh, you know the system is as objective as possible, as you said before. Um, but certain things need to level off, and we need to see patterns of behavior. As John said, it's going to settle out. The model, the objective model, is going to settle out. You know, we could immediately do some kind of ICO on this stuff as others have done. And they've done it without even having a system like this. We've completed this system over the course of five years and we didn't 
go off and do some ICO and say we're going to deliver something in two years, three years, so on. What's important to us is that the community accepts it. That's a good point for your uh, cryptocurrency conference. Responsibility in making sure that that system provides exactly what the users would want to expect before just coming out and irresponsibly tying some kind of cryptocurrency to it immediately. Uh, so our goal is to take this in steps and have the community determine what that objective model is. That way, when we do switch over to the cryptocurrency, it's safe, people have expectations and assurances that they can rely on, and there are market values for different grades of resources, and we know the patterns of behavior to expect and uh, the expectations that buyers and sellers are going to have. So this is a long, uh, the, that model, it, it's gonna be a sedentary thing, you know? It's, it's gonna come out, it's gonna come out of that process uh, and the community is gonna determine what that model is. Yeah, I totally understand this approach. You guys want to put people into the process to try to get prices defined out of the pe out of people's behaviors over the process and over the the transactions and and the resources. Uh, but you guys have to bear in mind that uh, market has a golden rule, which is you can only state a price, you can only put a price in something you know. And if you have a currency that has no clear emission rules, you guys have a problem because market will be in doubt all the time. And it creates uncertainty. Uncertainty is not good for any market. So uh, I think that's my views on, the, on, on your project, respectfully. I appreciate your description. It's awesome. And uh, yeah, I wish you guys good luck on this. But yes, uh, remember that we are uh, going from the software world into the economy world. You, you guys have to remember that you're dealing with economy variables. And uh, maybe some things could be a little bit more defined in, so that things could be put to work. Well, I also want to point out that this is why we did separate this concept of goodwill, which is used to trade, buy and barter and give away these resources from the cryptocurrency that we want to bring out, which we want to use to be able to purchase objects of all types. Because, you know, that we agree with you completely. And, and that is going to be brought out in, in, a very structured way. But like Alex says, we, the, 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 this particular goodwill is going to be maybe millions of times a second where this is some decisions being made about these smart contracts and which, where should you be buying your resources from? Now, this is, ta this is tapered a little bit by the fact that you don't want thrashing just like you have in uh, virtual memory subsystems, when you're making decisions so quickly that you keep going back and forth, we want this, these decisions to, the, the, the global decisions to be made over time, but the micro decisions still, could still be made quickly. And that's, you know, all this stuff we have to study, and that's why we separated out this, this currency of goodwill versus the currency of the crypto coin out later okay by the way if, if you guys haven't looked at it I would suggest to go to our website and um, at the you know, super tie this point-to-point -point, uh, cloud software this peer-to-peer -peer cloud software and unless the, the instructions are there to download it, install it on your system and use it and see what you think of it. It's all open source. It's all free. Um, 
We also have a, a kind of an interesting hardware device. It's a router. You don't need the router in order to use Subutai, but the router is a very high, uh, high quality router. And it does broadband routing of all types, both wired and Wi-Fi. It has the ability to add disks to it, RAID disks to hold data. So you could use it as a NAS device. But, and it also is, acts as an Internet of Things gateway. Hold a Internet of Things device that is, you know, runs off the Raspberry Pi or runs off the Arduino. You can take that device and plug it into our router and use the router to control your Internet of Things. But more in tune with this particular group, we also have one of the most powerful FPGAs in the market that just came out. And we are going to allow this, this router that's just on all, all the time and only draws 18 watts. We're going to allow it to bind cryptocurrency. So while you're it's sitting in your house handling the stuff that your router normally handles, it's also mining cryptocurrency. And there will be a wallet built into the router to hold the cryptocurrency that you mine. And we've donated or we've released all the all the specifications for this router up on GitHub so that people could pull this down, they could build it if they wanted to themselves, and we've made it open hardware. We're also building these routers inside of Brazil as part of the uh, Caninos Lucas program that I've been working on for five years to create inexpensive, high quality, single board computers in Brazil. We have, we have joined with this program and we're going to be producing that in Brazil so that the price is as low as humanly possible. And we hope that to bring this out at the latest in January in high volume manufacture. That's great. We will be looking forward to, to seeing this product. If you want to, you can go to our web pages and you can see the specifications. You can see the, uh, the initial drawings of it and stuff, the, the mock-ups of it. And you can also go to GitHub and look at the circuit diagrams and all of the complete specifications for it. We will appreciate you if you send the links to the conference administrator so that you'll be able to forward it to all of us which who are interested in your project. It seems very, very interesting. Okay, I could put together a, uh, a paper tomorrow or email tomorrow with all the links that I think are relevant to you. No problem. Is there any other things that you, you, know, you want us to talk about or discuss? So uh, the rest of my initial question, uh, you, you, you told us about your project. It's awesome. It's a, an amazing project. And I, I wish you success. And, and there is a second part of my question. Uh, it was about the outlook of the, the software market 10 years from now, including your project and other things that might cross your mind about cryptocurrencies and all this new trend that, that we, all, we are all experiencing. Well, quite frankly, as I said, a couple of years ago, I really questioned cri cryptocurrencies and their value and everything else. But over the years, as I thought more about it, I realized that this is a really amazing thing. And particularly in the purchase of software and programs where you could deliver the programs in, in, in microseconds over the net. And yet you could, you know, if you go to pay for it, you have to use some something awkward like PayPal or credit cards. There's a credit card charge 
There's all these things which stand in the way of you just doing this simple transaction you want to do. And cryptocurrencies fix that problem. And I could say, oh, I really like that program. Here's some cryptocurrency, and boom, it comes back and it's delivered to me. I think that alone it would be wonderful. Without your experience, yeah. do you see any initiatives coming up in the next years? I'm sorry. What? With all your experience, with all your experience, do you see any initiatives in this way um, coming up in the upcoming years? Like people uh, willing to do it, willing to I implement them. I think with the acceptance of cryptocurrencies I've been seeing in the past that I've been I've been really paying attention to it in the past several months with acceptance of cryptocurrencies I think it's only probably less than a year before companies like Apple or uh, you know or other companies that that have program marketplaces start selling things with cryptocurrencies I really don't see it being longer than that. You know, I, I, I look at all the announcements coming out of different company countries that are accepting cryptocurrencies to pay your taxes. You know, countries that are, you know, that are accepting them. Yes, you have countries like China who say, oh, my God, what's happening? And uh, but at the same time, the same time that China is doing that, Canada and Japan says, bring it on. And so I think in a year or two years that people will start saying, yes, you know, send me the cryptocurrency and I'll send you the program. And, and, and the fact that it cuts down so much or credit card charges would make people say, hey, I, I don't care if cryptocurrencies, people think that cryptocurrencies are uh, risky. You know, I'm saving three to five percent on my on my purchase every time I make a purchase just by using it. And I think that that's going to be, you know, that utility is going to be very, very accepted. So I, you know, my right now I'm I'm sending out feelers to companies to say. Would you accept our cryptocurrency for your products, and particularly digital products? Products that, so, so maybe you have, so let's say your magazine. You have paper magazines, which cost money. You know, it, there's, there's the, the fixed cost of the magazine, which is putting together the articles, laying it out, things like that. But then there's a variable cost, which is the paper and the mailing. You might say, I can't take a risk with that. I really need to have the money coming in to pay that bill. On the other hand, there's the digital copy that really doesn't have any costs. You know, it's the variable cost on it is close to zero. And so if you say to them, just for the digital copies, would you be willing to accept cryptocurrency? Then they have to sit there and say, What's the likelihood that this cryptocurrency is, is not going to be valuable to me? But the other thing is, hey, I may be getting a new reader that I never got before by allowing them to buy it with this cryptocurrency. And so they would go ahead and do that. And this is the marketing message, which I'm giving to these people. That, you know, it's okay if you don't want it to do your paper copy. You want to save that for your real, you know, your paper currency or your check or your credit card. If you use cryptocurrency to buy it, then you may be attracting a new marketplace that you wouldn't reach otherwise. And, you know, they've, I think they've been receptive to that message. And, you know, it's not just that. It's, it's things like perhaps certifications, which is another thing that has a fixed cost and a variable cost. But the variable cost is very, very low. So you might be able to make a case for a certification voucher with cryptocurrency. And there's really no downside. 
So, you know, I think it's very close. Do you, do you have any questions or you think I'm full of, of crap or, or what? I have another very important question and I think it's very important for the community as well. It's about, uh, it's still about cryptocurrencies, which is our focus here. But um, I think that everybody well, has been experiencing a boon in a lot of new cryptocurrencies and some of them very unknown, very specific to a certain area like dentists or doctors or I don't know, uh, stores or, or digital goods or whatever you can think of. And you have this mix of cryptocurrencies coming out all the time. And I think that the most important question is, uh, nowadays you have Bitcoin, which is the standard cryptocurrency for storing value. And it's becoming more and more... Uh, difficult to make payments with it because of the fees, because of uh, network rates, and a lot of issues that we experience when we try to transact using Bitcoin. And on the other hand, you have all these so-called altcoins that are so specific to a lot of areas, a lot of different areas, and it seems to, it seems like every area of activity will have its own currency. It's not uh, an I, something that we see today, but it's something that it seems to be coming up very slowly. Do you agree with this? Do you think that we will have separate cryptocurrencies for each activity, each human activity? Or do you believe that a single cryptocurrency will comprehend all these fields and allow for uh, transactions between all of them, and between pers people involved with all these fields. What are your views on that? So, so Vladimir, help me with this because um, how many Linux distributions are there? No idea. So Would you many. say hundreds? Maybe. And I can't, you know, ideally, I would love to have had one Linux distribution because then it's very easy to write documentation and things like that. It would be very easy to train people on the one Linux distribution. But what we found was that different Linux distributions hit different markets and were valuable to that market. And that's why they brought it out. That's why people used them. And to try and force them into one Linux distribution was not in cards. Now, I don't you know, I have no control and I have no crystal ball as to whether there will be only one cryptocurrency, whether there be five cryptocurrencies, two, I mean, there's hundreds of currencies in the world. You know, you mark, you know and, and the euro wiped out a whole bunch of them and made the euro, but then you have the dollar and you have the yen and so forth and so on. And the real problem with, with all of that, there's two problems. Number one, they're physical and just getting them from place to place. And number two, the conversion rates are ridiculous. So it's not just the rate, it's not the rate that's ridiculous, it's how much you lose in that conversion. So. You know, I have no answer for it. I don't know if there's going to be, you know, tens of cryptocurrencies or hundreds of cryptocurrencies. I do know that some of them are failing because people didn't believe in them, because they, they didn't have anything to really back them up. But, you know, if you look at currencies, you know, physical currencies like the dollar, we used to be backed up by gold. And quite frankly, when we dropped that, the dollar became even more valuable because it was freed up to meet the needs of commerce. There wasn't enough gold in the world to meet the needs of commerce. 
So I don't, I don't have an answer for you, my friend. No but problem. I do know that we are going to encourage our, you know, our customers to pay for things with cryptocurrency. This answer is worth billions of dollars. <laughs> are you, uh, is there, there's somebody here uh, asking if you're going to Sao Paulo camp campus party next January. Next, are you, are, yes, you, my, are you coming over? Yes, my plan is to come to campus party. And um, if, you, if you will bear with me for just a moment, I would like to say that I have been working for five years to get a computer similar to the Raspberry Pi produced <laughs> in Brazil at a reasonable cost. And I've been talking about it for a number of years, uh, a little computer made by a company called LeMaker in China produce. Things have changed and we are going to produce that computer. Uh, we think we can produce perhaps 10,000 of them in time for campus party. And it is our goal to be able to give to every single campus party participant. So if you register for campus party, you would get one of these computers. Awesome. Um, yes. And the reason we're doing that is to try and facilitate people uh, using those computers to create new products and new, uh, new ideas to, to stimulate creativity. That's awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, people are saying they are ready Love you at the campus party uh, as a keynote speaker. I've been at a campus party many years ago, and I, I had the pleasure of listening to you, but it was in the 90s. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit old as well. And uh, uh, one more question about this Raspberry Pi. Why, what is the average cost? The average cost of the Raspberry Pi from everything I've been able to, to this Brazilian find, Brazilian and, version. Yeah, the it, so in the United States, the Raspberry Pi sells for thirty-five dollars. From everything I've been told, and there are some exceptions because some people bring Raspberry Pis in in their luggage from the United States and then sell them at discounted prices here in Brazil. But if you go to a store and you try and buy a Raspberry Pi Model 3, you'd pay the equivalent of 150 US dollars for it, and that would be around 450 reais. In Brazil. And I asked that in Brazil, and I asked that of people in the meeting today I was in, and they agreed that that was the street price Pi. We believe we would sell a computer that has all of the features of Raspberry Pi, but twice as much RAM. It has USB 3 instead of USB 2. And it has it has 40 GPIO pins, just like the Raspberry Pi does. Does it have a USB 3? Does it have a USB 3? Does it have a USB 3? Because USB, USB, USB 2 is 3, yes. so slow. <laughs> it has USB 3. And the benchmarks that have been done on it show that it runs every application at least as fast as a Raspberry Pi Model B. A lot of applications run twice as fast, and some applications run three times as fast. And we hope, we, we, we know we can produce this for less than $80. So that would be 270 reais. Including taxes? If we sell enough of them, if we manufacture enough of them, with they Brazilian taxes included? 70. Is this price with Brazilian taxes included? Yes. Oh, that's awesome. Very exciting news. And th but see, this isn't the only computer we want to produce. Like I said before, we want to produce the uh, router that we want, and we want to produce it here in Brazil, using giving jobs to Brazilians, we want to cooperate and collaborate with entities like telecommunications companies. I just spent the last two days talking to PTI, 
and a typo out at LatinoWare with them and say, what do you want in this router that would help produce this through this program called Caninos Locos? And we, it's not our intent to produce all of these in one company. We want to get the design done. We want to get the manufacturing perfect. And then what we will do is transfer all this information to some of the 150 different companies in Brazil that have surface mount technology machines. And that will give jobs to their people. And then we go on and we do the next computer. And we keep innovating in the computer. And one of our side projects is to complete is to build a completely blobless system. No binary bo objects at all in the system. It's all buildable from source code so that Richard Stallman will be happier. We know he will never be happy. He'll just be happier. That's exciting news, Hello? sir. We really appreciate your initiative. Well, I, I, I go to campus party and I go around Brazil and I, I really think it's a crime against God that <laughs> young students cannot afford to have a Raspberry Pi. I understand why the Brazilian government levels the taxes they do. And believe me, I know more about Brazilian taxes on electronics than I ever wanted to learn. But at the same time, I think it's a blocking force. And since I couldn't change the tax laws, I had to figure out how to legally manufacture this computer, pay all the taxes, and still bring it in at a reasonable price. Why somebody else has not done this, I have no idea. And I don't have the time to find out. <laughs> Amazing. Well, I'll leave it open. Uh, if someone else wants to make you questions, it was a, such a pleasure to to talk to you. Uh, we, Alex, do you have anything else you want to say? And Alex? Yeah, I am. Um... You know, the uh, million dollar question or the billion dollar yes. question that you asked before was uh, very interesting. And I, as, as you guys were talking, and as John was mentioning some of the aspects of, uh, of, of uh, currencies, it became, you, you know, we're, we're trying to search for an objective model, but if you look at human nature, People are subjective about value. Buy a plane ticket. You know, when you buy it in advance, you know, it's cheaper. And when you're rushed and you have to buy it two days before your flight, you know how the airlines kind of stick it to you. Yes, you know, but... you get gouged, right? Right, but so there's you... a subjectivity there, and human nature. Since we started trading, uh, bartering, uh, there is a degree of subjectivity, and that's one of the reasons why you know I feel that there's not going to be one dominant cryptocurrency, or I don't feel that cryptocurrency is going to remove the need for. Uh, fiat currencies that governments hold. I think that they're going to have an equilibrium. There's going to be a balance uh, that, that we're going to reach. These days are crazy, uh, you know, uh, but, you know, I, th I think we need different, just as we need different languages for different purposes. No, you can't use a sledgehammer for a small finishing nail. Yeah. So that, you know, to be uh, uh, absolutist about cryptocurrencies or completely as uh, an exchange medium, I don't think that's going to happen. I think that you know we're going to have some kind of combination of it, and we're going to learn to you know have uh, fiat currencies living alongside cryptocurrencies. And I think 
the utility factor is going to be the determining uh, aspect of, uh, of what becomes a successful cryptocurrency versus something that's not a successful currency. It's, it's a, how useful is it to me? Can I buy a cup, cup of coffee with it? Can I, you know, and, and, and one, of the, one of the reasons why we're trying to make this router mine um, uh, Ethereum tokens is uh, we want it to be a physical wallet that everybody can relate to that, that is tangible um, and uh, with a TPM device inside to uh, uh, store their keys for their wallet and mine this cryptocurrency because we want to bring it to the mass market. I don't know, I get all these statistics about percentages of uh, how many people are actually, how many people actually uh, had uh, Bitcoin at one time versus the, the, the mass population, you know, the 99% plus that, that never did and are wondering uh, about it and feeling left out of the uh, cryptocurrency economy. And I think one of the things that we're trying to do as Optime is, un is enable everyone to participate in that uh, economy, but we, we want to be very careful about it. Uh, we're experimenting with a lot of things. And I think whatever you use your current uh, cryptocurrency for, you need to make sure it's not going to hurt anyone. And that's the most important thing. I think John will agree with me on that. Yes, uh, only one uh, comment on your comparison that you did before over plane tickets. Um, yes, it's all about subjectiveness of the human nature. Uh, when you buy a plane ticket and the, price, and the prices just float uh, very rapidly depending on when you buy the ticket. Uh, you have to bear in mind that time, it's time, for example, but there is also subjectivity in other other dimensions. I mean, you know, obviously they gouge you, and there's a greater value to get that ticket in an urgency. But you can apply this dynamic to several aspects in society where the value of something does become subjective at some point. You have to bear right. in mind that. Uh, a value of something, uh, yes, it, it's, it's subjectively defined, but it's objectively modeled because it's modeled, uh, it's modeled by uh, two opposite forces, the availability or offer of an asset and the demand. If you have these two components, you can define, you can humanly define a price of an asset and it it doesn't seem to work this way for the goodwill because it's not something that has an opposite force against it an opposite force limiting the offer so that the the demand can be controlled so uh, this is the only uh comment that I, i'd like you to think about but for the rest you're right Sure, we, we need a lot of conversations. Uh, hopefully we can catch you uh, outside of this limited time uh, to discuss these matters. We would love to have a conversation over some beers. Uh, oh. <laughs> to, to, to go in depth and... I take the invitation right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, actually, I, I have a suggestion. I mean, we are going to be going to campus party. Alex is going to be coming over in January. Uh, what we're planning on doing at Campus Party is, like I said, making sure that we have between eight to... And I, uh, it will be a pleasure to join you in this conversation. It will be very, very productive. And for now, our time is up. Okay. And I wish to... I'd like to thank you both for this wonderful presentation. Uh, you guys are amazing. Uh, professionals and so respected by all the software community in general and the Bitcoin community in particular. So thank you very much. Okay, well, thank you for setting this up. And, thank you. And thank you. Yeah, and thank you to Alex for joining in and, and, and helping with this because you're certainly uh, the uh, mastermind of our Bitcoin strategy. Thank you.
Thank you. Take it easy, guys. Thank you, everyone.